Okay, so the next step would be to dry up the layout file. Since the layout is loaded with every page, we need to take everything that doesn't belong on every page out of it. So that'll start from the hero area all the way down to the beginning of the footer. Now, we may decide to keep the map and these call to actions in the footer, but we'll decide that later. And so we'll take this stuff, we'll cut it out, and we'll place it with template content. And we'll come down to our templates and grab the homepage template and just paste that right in there. And lastly, we have to go to the homepage file and tell it to use, or the homepage content file and tell it to use this particular template, right? So we're gonna go to site, content, pages, and it's your index. And uh, it's already set to home. Uh, whether well, that was a default or something I did earlier in testing, um, doesn't really matter. So if we refresh, let's see. Yep, everything looks the same. Okay. Next step, and something to know about how the template parser works is the smaller the chunks of HTML it has to work with, the faster it can parse them. So given the choice between a super long layout file or a layout file with a few smaller partials, um, I would lean towards the partials method. It'll just speed up your processing. So we'll take the nav and replace that with a partial. And come down here, partials, nav, just drop that in there. And we'll do the same thing with the footer. We'll include this script stuff, partial footer. All right, refresh, and we should still be the same. Excellent. Okay, you notice something I like to do here. This is almost a WordPress kind of convention where the body class picks up some context about the page and template that you're on. So I have it using the template name, and if it's not set, which really it, it should be all the time, um, it'll use segment one, which would be your you know, slash services or about. And if that's not set, it'll use home. And that way we get this class that we can pivot some layouts on without having to manually always pass a var into the layout. Okay, so with that done, uh, we'll make a few more tweaks here. Uh, I always am gonna have a title the way I build sites, so I don't even need to worry about that. And I do like to have an overridable meta title. Uh, the title is often pretty good, and I'm sure you've used that before, um, but I usually check for a meta title override first. And then we can add, you know, Saratoga. I keep doing that, Saratoga Chimney Sweep. I have one friend who owns Saratoga Contractor and another who owns Saratoga Chimney Sweep. So I do mix those up myself. All right, now we have a description and we'll do like the same thing here. Um, meta description or Let's see, um, chimney, chimney sweeps for Saratoga County and beyond. Sure, something clean and default. All right, there we go. That's a pretty dry layout file. However, I'm not gonna stop there yet. We're gonna do just the beginnings of some content modeling. So I'll come back down to our home and actually, let's let's do the footer first. Actually, we'll start from the top to the bottom. We'll start in the nav uh, and take some of these global settings out, or these global content bits like phone number and stuff, and we'll put those into a global file. So we'll start with a phone number, and we'll just replace that with phone. And we'll do that in both places. Now we'll create a global a global variable for that be site, content, globals, and global.yaml. Now you can scope your globals if you wanna group them by different uh, names. So if you wanted, oh, let me just finish this real quick, um, phone. Okay, so if you wanted uh, to use like, I don't know, company info colon phone, you would create a company underscore info 
.yaml file, and that would automatically scope those, just if you want. Okay, so we've got that. Let's reload, make sure that still works. Excellent. All right, now we can replace all the phone numbers with phone. And let's see, we have one in the footer. Let's come down to footer. And we'll do email as well. Come back to global. Now you'll see that when you refresh the page, any content file um, that is new will get this ID automatically. Sometimes I just move it to the top like this, I don't know. And uh, so what that ID does is let Statimic make relationships dynamically. And uh, you don't have to touch them, just don't ever change them once they're created. And make sure you create them. If, you're, if you are developing locally, make sure you're, you commit your code after the ID has been created. All right, now I don't know his email address, so we'll go to the current site. Uh, .com. Yeah, as you can see, it does need a redesign. <laughs> I did this site in 2010, so, um, okay. <laughs> it's not visible anywhere. Uh, it's cool. So we'll just come back to that later. We'll close out these extra tabs. Um, we'll just take it, I guess, info at Saratoga chimney sweep .com. Cool. Next, uh, let's see. Well, let's bring that global back up. We'll do the social social bits here yelp twitter facebook youtube yelp twitter facebook and youtube And one last thing I like to do is a little yield here. So yield uh, footer. And this will let us inject stuff into the footer from other content files, uh, other templates by just doing um, section footer and then you can um, wrap stuff like that and whatever will be, well, let's just say like script uh, alert yo dog. Let's, let's actually do this. Um, home. There we go. Cool. So that is a way of, you know, injecting content into the place you want in your layout or other files. Actually, I just realized, and uh, you probably did too, I missed this. All right. And this. All right, now that should do it.